Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chris with CNM Aquatics. Today I'm just going to do a short video on this Kent Marine Calc Wasser that I've been using. So, Calc Wasser, what it does is it raises the alkalinity and the calcium in your aquarium together. And what's nice is that Calc Wasser does, it, does both of them together because they are related and they can play off of each other. I've had a dip in my um, alkalinity and my calcium has gone haywire and I'm trying to get that back into balance. So for the instructions you can use one to two teaspoons per gallon of Calquasser. I stick with one teaspoon per gallon. This is a five gallon bucket so I'm going to get five teaspoons. It is much better to start slow. Um, you can even do half a teaspoon if you're worried about it. I recommend starting slow because Calquasser can and will kill, kill things in your aquarium if you're not careful with it. If you shoot your alkalinity through the roof overnight, you're going to kill stuff. Especially if you have um, a lot of SPS, they're very sensitive to that. So it's much better to take it slowly. So I'll put my powder Calquasser in the bucket and then I'll mix it with some RODI water here. And I'll let it sit for several hours. And what it's going to do is it it kind of separates into different layers. Um, so I'll take this this five gallon bucket and I'm going to transfer it to a bigger bin. And I'll let it age in this bin. So what it does is it separates. You get a skim coat on top that you're going to throw away, and you get um, a clear layer. That's the layer you want to use in your aquarium, and then you get a you get a precipitate on the bottom of your container, and you're gonna throw that away. You don't want all that powder sitting in your aquarium. So I mix large batches at a time, and this will last me for about a month. And I've tested the the water at the end of the month, and it, it's still good; it hasn't gone bad. It is important not to remix this solution once it is mixed and settled because that can change the effectiveness of it um, I believe it if you mix it again it releases co2 and it's not as potent so they say not to mix it once it's been originally mixed so here what I'm doing is I'm just kind of scraping off that top, top powdery skim coat layer that you can see there you don't want that in your in your aquarium and how I'm doing this you'll see I'm gonna take the calc wasser and I'm gonna put it into my ATO reservoirs so that as the water evaporates out of the aquarium it's getting dosed with the calc wasser as well so I'll skim off the top really well and then I'll fill some one gallon jugs that I'll go use to fill the ATO reservoirs with I'll take the, the jug, I'll get a clean spot on the surface of the water and submerge it. And as the air escapes out of the milk jug, it's going to shoot bubbles up and then kind of push that powdery top skim coat away. So I'm just filling with the clear liquid, that middle layer. That's what we want. That's what we want to be using in the aquarium. So I'll fill five of these um, one gallon jugs a week and put it into the ATO reservoir. And that'll last me about a week. And like I said, this bin will last me for about a month. And then I'll mix up a new batch next month. Most people, if you just have one aquarium, you, you probably don't need this much sitting around. I've got eight marine, eight saltwater aquariums set up growing coral in. So I need I need a bunch of it. I'm trying to maintain calcium and alkalinity, magnesium and all of them. I will say be prepared if you're gonna use this in your ATO reservoir, um, you will get precipitate in 
in those containers, whether you're using you know a smaller 10 gallon aquarium like I am or a, a bucket, whatever you're using, be prepared to, I would recommend cleaning that out regularly to get the powder off the bottom of it because it, the cow flosser will precipitate out of the water and you'll get a powdery film on your ATO pump and your tubing in your container. And if you don't keep it clean, it will precipitate and, and crust over the pumps, the ATO pumps and, and your return lines. So it's pretty important to keep those clean. A good rule of thumb, a good habit I try to do is every six months, I will take my pumps, you know, and my power heads out of my aquariums and I'll soak them in some warm, warm water with um, white distilled vinegar. I'll let them soak. So you can see the, the ATO pump down there actually having a little specimen container, like a peacup when you go to the doctor. I have the pump sitting in that container to keep it up off the bottom of the um, ATO reservoir here, because you don't want to suck that powder in, into the pump and pump that powder into the aquarium. So it's important to, whether you have the pump mounted on the side of the glass or up on some type of um, plastic block or in a cup, you just want to keep it up off the bottom of the, the container so it doesn't suck in the powder. Same thing here, it's kind of hard to see, but I have the, the little pump in one of those specimen containers. We use those containers, we ship our coral. When you, if you buy coral off our website, we'll put them in the, the specimen containers. It works a lot better than bags. It, the coral seems to poke through the bags. I, I like using these specimen cups. So I found another use for them with the pumps. So that's how I use Kalkwasser. Um, if you guys have anything to add, please leave it in the comments below. I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks a lot.